I wanted to talk to you guys about working with others at weddings. There's so many little things that I think a lot of like DJs make mistakes with when it comes to working with other vendors, other people at weddings. And they're easily preventable. And I really just think it's just about understanding the other, you know, the other side of things and just in general, working with others at weddings is crucial to the success of a wedding, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. And I wanted to go over little things that I do that I've learned the hard way. Most of these things I've learned the hard way because I made the mistake first and I'm like, ah, not going to do that again, right? So I want to prevent you from making these mistakes. If you're brand new, this will change your life. If you're a vet, there might be one or two things in here that you never thought of. So regardless what kind of DJ you are, you know, all right. regardless what kind of experience as a wedding DJ you have, this will help you, okay? So we're going to go down the line here. Let's start with the officiant. I got cartoons today, okay? I thought it would be fun with little cartoon graphics. So first thing when it comes to officiants, right? Now, you know, five last five, seven years, everyone gets married on, on, you know, on property now. It used to be always in the church and it was rare. Now we're, we're almost always doing the ceremony and we're working with officiants. So when you work with officiant, a couple things to keep in mind that are very, very important. Number one, you want to identify whether or not they're a rookie, okay? Rookie or vet. This is something that's even more recent. I would say the last three years. See, when they started doing weddings on location, I feel like everyone hired a vet. Everyone hired an officiant. They would actually talk their priest into coming, a judge, or some kind of authority. Then people started doing weddings for a living, right, on the side or whatever, and they got good at it. You would hire a professional officiant. But more recently, a lot of people have been getting friends because you can go on universallifechurch.com pay 40 bucks, get ordained, and now you can marry whoever you want. And so they'll have their friend up there. And these are people that have never done weddings ever, right? So they're rookies. It's their first wedding, probably their last wedding, okay? This is the only time they're ever going to officiate in their lives. So you want to know whether or not they're a rookie because rookies obviously need a little more assistance. I asked the couple up front, okay? So a lot of times I'll ask the couple, hey, you know, uh, who's marrying you? Did you hire him? Is it your cousin, right? Is it a friend of yours? Okay, and then you kind of know what you're in for ahead of time. So then when you get there, let's say it's a rookie. Always with rookies. Number one, remind them to talk into the damn mic, okay? The microphone amplifies your voice. Therefore, you have to talk into the direction of the microphone. The microphone has to be pointed at your mouth. I explain how to use the stand, everything. I dumb it down. If they want a lav, I give them a lav and I clip them all, you know what I mean? And then like there's not as much, you know, coaching needed because the lav's set, but you know, make sure they talk into the mic. Don't think it's just an obvious thing because it's not. I've had rookie officiants literally take the mic and put it behind them and then start doing the wedding. Never been so mad in my life on the side. I'm like, are you, did you literally just put the mic behind you, bro? Behind you? And I'm cranking it to the gods. Can't hear anything. Sounds like shit. It looks like it's my fault, right? So always check with them with that. Number two, you got to remind them to tell everybody to take their seat. Another obvious one. I can't tell you how many times. And this actually, I will admit, this happened this past uh, weekend and because I, I, I forgot. This is actually what sparked me to think about all this sort of thing because um, I forgot to tell him. And he, it was a short wedding, thank God, 10 minutes. But he literally, if you don't tell them and they don't know, 90% chance they're not going to say nothing. Everybody who rose while the, you know, the, the bride or whoever was walking down the aisle, everybody who rose up for that, they're going to stay standing the entire ceremony. People need to be told what to do. If you don't tell the officiant, if you don't remind them ahead of time, hey, make sure you tell everybody to sit down too afterwards. Like just, you know, just, you know, just a little tip. I see some people, you know, whatever, just however you want to put it, nicey, nicey, not tell them what to do, but hey, you know, just a little tip, you know, I've seen in the past, make sure you tell everybody to take their seats. Oh yeah, yeah definitely will, right? Only if they're a rookie. If they're not a rookie, then, you know, obviously don't, don't, that's an obvious thing. It's like telling the DJ to mix or something. Make sure you, uh, you know, blend the songs together when you're playing tonight, but yeah, no shit, Sherlock, right? So, only if they're a rookie, but definitely remind them because otherwise, knees are going to be buckling at the ceremony. Now, with all efficients, okay, always, like I kind of said earlier, explain the mic situation. That includes, right, 
how to use the mic stand. I have a mic stand that's a squeeze, so I'll literally show them how to do that, right? You know, make sure the, the mic's in the right position, testing out the microphone, make sure they're, they're talking in the direction of the microphone, and make sure the microphone is on. Do not trust an efficient to turn your shit on for you, okay? Because they won't. They will forget, and you're going to be in the back, like, trying to get their attention to turn on the mic. It's happened to me a million times. I don't care how many times you tell them, make sure you turn it on. It's just this one switch. It's that easy. They will not turn it on. So turn on your own mic, okay? Replace the batteries. Make sure your batteries are up to par. Most mics should last five, six, seven hours on one set of batteries, so you're good. Turn it on yourself, okay? If it's the lab, turn it on yourself. Just put the volume all the way down on your end, okay? Trust me, trust me. Also, you have to plan out the ending, uh, ending with all officiants, okay? Of course, you want to you wanna know what they're saying at the end. So what I do is, number one, I always take a picture of their last page. Most of them have a page. They have a script that they're going to, right? Whatever page they're using. I take out my cell phone and say, hey, you mind if I take a picture of the last page so I can kind of follow along? They, they always say no problem. You take a picture at the last page. Now you can literally follow along and get your timing perfect with the recessional song. You just, you don't want to hit the song too early. You don't want it to be an awkward gap, okay? Some officiants present them, uh, present the couple, right? So for the first time as a married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, whatever. Some officiants just end on the kiss. You may kiss your bride, everybody uh, cheers or whatever, and then, then you're supposed to hit the song there. But you have no way of knowing unless you ask them ahead of time. Now, if you somehow forget to ask them, and you forget to go over things, maybe you're running a little late or you're kind of just flustered or something happened. There is one little trick you can use. This is like, but you, you never want to, you know, put yourself in the situation. You always want to ask ahead of time. So don't, you know, lean on this. But the one little trick you can use if you happen to not have talked to the officiant is their book. Whatever they're doing, like they usually have some type of book that they're reading off of, right? The book they're reading off of, when they close their book, or when they put it down to the side and they're not looking at it anymore, they have nothing left to say. So if they say, you know, you may now kiss your bride and then they kiss, everyone cheers and he closes his book, he or she closes his book or just, you know, the paper just puts it by her side, they're not like looking at it anymore, then you know they're done and you can hit the music. If they still have something to say, most people, large majority of people will still have it open, will still be like, well, they'll say it, they'll move the side for the pick, and then they'll be like, you know, preparing themselves for the next thing they have to say, presenting them or whatever. You'll notice that they still have something to say because they're going to have it open, they're going to be looking at it, right? So just watch their body language. But that's a last case resort. You always, always, always want to be ready ahead of time by talking to them, going over things. That way everything's smooth as butter, okay? Uh, ceremonies are very, very easy. As long as you have a good mic that doesn't cut out, as long as you get the music correct, as long as you get the timing correct, it's really a piece of cake and it's something you don't want to mess up ever because you're starting the day off wrong. You know, you mess up a ceremony up front. That's the worst way to start off a wedding, you know? So take that stuff seriously. Talk to your efficiency people. So that's step one. Okay. The efficiency, as far as like people, you know, the next thing I wanted to talk about were made or D's or banquet captains or head server, I don't know, whatever you call it, okay? We call it Mater D out here. There's a lot of different words. Whoever's in charge of the wedding at the venue, whoever's the boss of the venue, okay? They're, 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 they're keeping everybody in check and, and it's, it's your direct content, contact at the venue. The person you're working with at the venue for timing, everything, like that person, your, your go-to person, okay? There is one thing you have to keep in mind with these people, okay? It's very, 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 very important. Might be obvious, but I'll explain a little deeper, okay? And that is R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Have respect for the person running that venue. Let them talk. Let them explain things. Even if you already know what they're going to say, let them explain it. Let them lead you. You're in their house. I think a lot of DJs mess this up. And I learned this the hard way because I got chewed out a couple times because I was a young 18-year-old punk trying to do weddings. And I had a chip on my shoulder because everybody, you know, judged me for being so young. And, you know, where's the real guy at? So I was like, oh, I'm going to show them, blah, blah, blah. And I learned the hard way with this. And I've been, I've, been, I've been living my life by this principle ever since. Obviously, I have respect for everybody. 
But what I mean with the Mater D, okay, with the captain or whoever the hell, whatever, whatever you call it, you don't, so many DJs make the mistake of like, filling in there like all right if someone's explaining something to you right all right so first up we're going to do this so many djs will step over them be like oh yep yep we're gonna do this and this and this and right and i already went over it. yeah don't worry no i got it i got it no don't worry i got it let them explain it to you even if you know what they're gonna say let them talk let them explain it to them and say okay sounds great okay sounds great thank you very much sounds great okay no problem if they say anything redundant just say sounds great no problem yes them to death and do exactly what they tell you to do obviously and then if they say anything that like doesn't line up with what you talked about with the couple, then just tell them like, like oh, well, I, I met with them last week and they said this, did they just recently change it? Or should we check with them? Like, what, what do you think? Like, what do you think? Ask them what they think. Don't demand. Don't say, no, you're wrong. Don't ever tell them you're wrong. Nothing like that. Have respect for them. Go with the flow, have respect for them. If there's anything messed up, just ask them. You know, did, did you think this is a recent change? What do you think? Because I had this. Did I, me- I might have messed this up, but like, and they'll say, oh, no, no, we'll triple check, da, da, da. But don't go in there acting like a know-it-all. I don't care how much experience you have, how great of a DJ you are. It doesn't matter, okay? Let them talk. Let them explain. Go with the flow. Yes them to death. Have respect. And remember where you're at. It's their house. It's going to make for a way better working environment. Some people are just off the bat, super easy to work with. Others are control freaks. You will get into some venues and you'll see these Mater D's. They're straight up control freaks. Like they're, they don't mess around. This isn't a game. Like, you know what I mean? Like they want to have control regardless. Like they don't care who you are. They need to have like that control. And that's how you handle people like that. Otherwise they're going to buck. They're going to, they're, they're, they're going to, they're going to have a big problem with you. Trust me on this. Okay. So just do more listening than talking when it comes to working with Mater D's. Same thing goes, honestly, for wedding planners. This is like the smallest I've ever been. Look at this. See me? Look, see me right here? I'm on the iPad. (laughs) I guess this seems a little ridiculous. But go with the flow of wedding planners. Same thing, you know, wedding planners, you know, they they definitely micromanage everything for the most part, but that's their job. They want to make sure every detail is good. So if they tell you something that's, you know, super obvious, just say, okay, sounds great. That's all. You know, just go with it. There's no need for, you know, just let, let, let build trust with them by being easy to work with, easy to direct. And then in the future, when you work with them again, you're not going to have them micromanaging you anymore. You know, that's something I learned the hard way too. Cause at first, when I first got up to like, you know, higher end weddings, when I'm working with wedding planners, I actually didn't like wedding planners. I was like, this sucks. They're telling me all this obvious stuff. Obviously I know how to do this. Da, da, da. And it's like, check yourself, Nick, like relax. Okay. How do they know? You know, how do they know? What are they supposed to Google you or something? What are they supposed to make? Like, who cares? Just go with the flow. Let them tell you whatever and just say yes. No problem. No problem. No problem. Work well with these people. They will refer you. They will help you out. And once they get to know you, it'll get much, much easier. They won't have to ask you about these little things. They'll trust you, you know? But you got to build that trust first. Look at it from their perspective. They never worked with you before. They don't know who you are. You could suck, okay? They're just making sure. They're looking out for the couple just like you're looking out for the couple. Everybody here, everybody I'm talking about today is on the same page. They're all they all have the same goal. They want to have a successful wedding. So it's all about working together. So check the ego. Trust me. Check the ego. I learned the hard way. I've been there. And then I'm driving home the next that night and I'm like, it's kind of a dick back there. You know, I shouldn't have said that. It shouldn't have been like that, you know, and then you feel bad. And then now they think you're a douche, right? Like I've been there. Don't do that. Don't put yourself in the situation. And then the other really important things, uh, people we work with are photographers and video people, cinematographers, if you will. Now I will admit that there are things that photographers do and some videographers do that drive me nuts, but that's not what this is about today. (laughs) Because, you know, if you play all your cards right and you do all the right things with them, you know, then you're more likely to not have them do the things that would drive you nuts, okay? Because it's like a mutual respect thing. And if you work well with them, they're gonna work well with you. 
most of the time. It's very, very important. When it comes to photographers, number one, communication is the biggest thing. The biggest thing. Both ways. Both ways. Goes both ways. They got to they, they gotta communicate with you. You got to communicate with them. Okay. And that, that includes everything. Okay. You can't, you know, talking to them about what enhancements you have, the timing of things, five minute warnings before you do things. When it comes to enhancements, if I have uplighting, if I have spotlights in particular, I always show the photographer and the video person ahead of time. Like, listen, uh, I'm going to do a warm wash for the spot. This is what I'm going to do. I'll show it to them. The exact, uh, you know, brightness setting, everything. Is this cool for you or should I do something different? You let me know. They adjust their camera settings to it. They make sure it's okay. If they want something different, they'll tell me and then I can adjust it. But no surprises, right? If you don't go over what lighting you're doing with them ahead of time, then they're not going to see this until it's time for them to actually shoot when they either get the shot or they don't. You know what I mean? So now they're adjusting settings on the fly. They're, they're, they're going nuts like, oh shit, I didn't realize there's going to be a spotlight. You didn't tell me. Da, 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 da. And they may never say a word to you, but in the back of their head, they're pretty pissed off at you because, you know, they didn't, I mean, yeah, they could have seen the spots and asked, but like, still, be be proactive. Tell them what you have, what you're going to do. If you have dancing on the clouds, tell them, hey, I got dancing on the clouds. And one little tip with that is when it comes to dancing on the clouds, I always shoot it at the first course. So I give them that first minute or so to get pictures without the clouds, right? So you can get them without, and then I'll shoot it, and then we have it for the rest of the time. So you usually get like a minute and a half or so of clouds. Sparks, hey, we're gonna do sparks at this moment in the song, about two minutes in-ish, you know, or they're gonna dip. Let them know what's going on with the sparks. Sparks are very hard to shoot because it's that bright, it's like fire looking, they have to set their camera settings right for that. Snow. Say all that stuff, right? Any enhancements to the first dance, formality, stuff like that, you got to let them know about so they can adjust their settings so they can be prepared across the board. Now, when it comes to timing, not only obviously don't do anything without telling them first, right? So if you're going to cut the cake, if you're going to you know throw the bouquet or something like that, if they're in the other room editing, in the other room eating or wherever they're doing, if they're taking a shit in the bathroom, go knock on the stall and let them know, yo, we're about to cut the cake in five minutes if you're good. Let them know so they're ready. Don't leave them out to dry. This happens all the time because it's the number one thing they bitch about. I, you know, when I get comfy with photographers, videographers, or if I know them, the, the ones I'm friends with, stuff like that, we're talking. It's the number one thing. Oh, all weekend, all these DJs are doing the shit. I got to run in. I missed this shot because they didn't let me know. It's the number one thing they bitch about with us. Give them the heads up. Don't do anything without giving everyone a five minute notice. Okay. We're all got to be on the same page. But it's not only that, also the timing of the songs. Let's say um, you're doing a first dance or a parent dance and they're fading it after the first course. Like they're literally fading it a minute and 15 seconds in. Let them know that. Let them know like, listen, all these dances, they're getting cut super short, like literally a minute and 15 seconds. So they can have a little more urgency when they're taking their pictures and, you know, video, you know, they're going to be recording regardless, but like the, the photographers can have a little more urgency with the pictures because they know they only have that short amount of time. Maybe they have a whole system where usually the dance is two minutes, two and a half minutes. So they get this shot and this shot and this shot. And then they didn't realize it was cutting off that early. So they didn't get the shots that they would have gotten in that last minute. So let them know about the timing. If it's super short, if there's anything out of the ordinary, let them know. If it's going to be super long, let them know. Listen, they're doing this, you know, dance for like five minutes straight. So just so you know, you got all the time in the world. Take your time. Cool. They'll take their time. Communication. Communication with them is super, super, super important. And if you communicate with them 100% of the time and do all the right things, and then they go and take the couple out for night shots and they don't tell you, so you want to open up the dance floor and the couple's not there, well, now you have every right to be like, yo, you know, with all due respect, I told you about everything. I've been communicating with you back and forth. Why don't you tell me about that? Right. And then now you have a right to be like, yeah, come on. Like, you know, it's two way street here. And then, and then of course they're going to be in the wrong and then they'll say, you're sorry, you know, but like most of the time that's not going to happen as long as you're communicating with them. Cause they're going to think about that, right? Like, well, he's been really on point. I got to make sure I tell him, you know, they, they all know what to do. Okay. It would be a super inexperienced photographer to do that. So, you know, in general, got to work, got to play nice. Another thing is do not get in their way when it comes to shots. Now, if you're one of those DJs that get a lot of pictures, get pictures, you know, like, like, like us, like, you know, we always get pictures and video and all kinds of stuff at the weddings. 
don't get in their way. Don't jump in front of them to get the shot. Train your assistants not to jump in front of them. You know, know what kind of lens they're using. If you're using like a longer lens, it's a zoom. So you're a little better kind of going underneath or whatever, but like shorter lenses is going to be more wide, things like that. Like just don't jump in front of shots. Don't, don't be the guy holding up your cell phone, trying to get a pick on the story when they're trying to get the right shot. Always be conscious of where they are, photo and video people and stay behind them. Okay, I'm always looking, where are they? And I'm always getting out of their picture. I don't want to be in their picture. I don't want to ruin their picture. Like that's something that'll come up in the bride and groom meeting later when they go like to kind of go over all their photos and videos and everything. They sit down and they talk about everything. And then they, you know, they're like, listen, um, I would have got this shot, but you see your DJ and they'll literally show them the picture that's perfect with the DJ with you right there ruining the shot. They'll literally throw you under the bus. Because, I mean, because at the end of the day, you did ruin the shot. And what are they going to take the blame for? No. They'll throw you under the bus the next meeting. So be conscious of that. Okay. Don't get in their way. And then the last and final thing is with video people, let them plug into your stuff. I know this annoys a lot of us. I don't know why. Set up your system so it's easy. If you're just using a controller, let them go out of the RCA master. Don't ever let them go out of your speaker because it'll pop when they pull it out, okay? But if you're using an external mixer, like you should be, then you have multiple ways to do this, right? There, there, there's headphone outs. There, there's, uh, there's booth outs of these mixers. Just let them get direct audio. Work well with them. Same thing with your ceremony setup for vowels and stuff like that. Just be op- ask them. Be proactive. Okay, I ask them ahead of time. Hey, do you need to get audio or anything like that? I have a setup here, setup here. You know, I can tell you what chord you need. You know, sometimes they say no, which is crazy to me. I don't know how you do. Why wouldn't you get direct audio? But like, you know, and 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 let them if they want to set up a backup thing in front of your stuff. That's fine. Just just let them do what they need to do. Okay. Now I disagree with having a bunch of stuff like looking, you know, in front of your setup, making everything look like shit, you know, then I kind of tell them, Hey, is there any way you kind of move this over a little bit? It's kind of in my direct vision, you know, and you try and be nice or whatever, but generally speaking, work well with them, let them plug in, let them do whatever they need to do to get the best possible video for the couple. Okay. Except for, uh, Except for the floodlights. I can't stand the damn floodlights. I mean, the, the ones that are on top of the camera where they're literally following people around, you know, the floodlights. It's just like, it's like people get awkward. They're dancing. It's just like this bright ass light on their face. Like they're literally like, imagine you're just like dancing, right? You're just dancing, having a good time. And all of a sudden it's like, like it's, it's just not, it's not needed in my opinion. Um, not very needed. 